I like the first episode of Volume 5. Not because there was anything especially fantastic about it. In fact, some moments like these bloody still images kind of annoyed me. Also, they played the entire Volume 4 post credit scene. But because it seems like things are actually happening. We already know that Team Ranger, Crow, and Yang are going after Raven. We know that Weiss is... Uh, uh, and then and then we know that Blake... Uh... <clears throat> so the episode has some really good highlights to it. But fuck that, let's talk about all the flaws. One, I noticed here on my first viewing that Crow, John, and Nora disappear from the hallway behind Ruby when she goes to leave. And that Ren completely disappears from the scene once they are leaving. I also couldn't help but notice this thing with Ilya's hand. The hell? Alright, so there are really five main points this episode in my mind, and the worst is Blake's. Which has Sun and Gira complaining about something, which we learn is the thing involving Ilya's scroll and the two fox fuckers that nobody really cared about after three minutes after their sole appearance so far. The scene goes fucking nowhere, and Blake's thing with Ilya also goes fucking nowhere. In fact, the only thing I noticed was the weird hand thing with Ilya, and this bodyguard seems to be insanely bored with their job. Oh, is there anything I can do for me, ma'am? Oh no, okay, bye bye. The next least important thing is Weiss really having a scene for only two reasons. One, to show that she cares about random people, and also so that Weiss fanatics like Astro can shut the fuck up, even if he hasn't seen Punch Bomb. But hey, this pilot is my new best friend because he just doesn't give a single fuck. Yang's scene is odd. While I like that she still has some PTSD, which seems to fit more in line with the explanation that she hasn't recovered, but just has a goal in front of her that she is pushing through her issues to deal with, what doesn't really fit that is that she's going for Raven. Uh, unless she's going to tell Raven to shut the fuck up and help Ruby and stuff, or this is all just a red herring, it just feels really out of character and also stupid. Admittedly, not as stupid as everything between her grabbing Dickhead's wrist up to the guy giving her a drink. The slow motion punch seems to have absolutely no way to it, the rubber bouncing bounce is fucking stupid, and it all really snapped away any immersion I had. Not to mention, it just feels wrong. So, while the whole hair thing might be acceptable when you're already in a fight or when it's against murderous fiends, punching a guy across the face just because he was reaching for your hair feels a little overkill. I'm sensitive about people so much as looking at me because I fucking hate myself, but I'm not going to blow their brains out because they poke my forehead. Oh, and apparently this drunkard dingbat wants to help her, and I really hope he dies immediately, because I don't like this poverty addition to Crow. Yeah, fuck this scene, really. Everything other than Yang's PTSD arm grab is just kind of stupid to me. But hey, at least we get to see Yang do something. But hey, the Ranger stuff was pretty good, in my personal opinion. The vocal work and mannerisms of Lion Fart are pretty good, and the exposition actually seems pretty fitting here, instead of having this gigantic, long whole episode focused on nothing but fucking exposition. Why exactly he didn't go to Ozma with the Spring Maiden and Raven information, I'd like to hope is because he only got it after Beacon's Fall, but yeah. Also, apparently only a specific Maiden can open a specific Relic's Chamber. I guess we're just listening to fanfic writers then. Really, everything in this scene is fine to me. Ozma seemed to like basically anything Ruby does in this episode. Oh, and Watts gets a voice line. Neat. Then the annoyingly long Crow and Oscar scene happened, which is about 1 minute and 40 seconds too long. I do like the scene after though, and really the stock footage does fit in admittedly, but it'd feel a lot less intrusive if it wasn't the end credits scene of Volume 4. Why exactly Crow got drunk afterwards when learning Oscar was Ospin, I don't know. You'd think he'd want to ensure Oscar was safe and that he could explain to Ranger what's up with the Oscar thing, but I guess it was because instead of using those minutes in the Wise Blake and Ryu scene for exposition, they just decided to waste their time shutting up Volume 4 complainers that didn't like the Ruby members not showing up all at once in the next step. Oh, and Oscar finally becomes not totally superfluous when meeting Team Ranger. I like how Nora, Ren, and John seem pretty cautious when Oscar mentions that he wants to see Ruby. I also like that he's a bit smaller than them. I mean, being a year under Ruby and three years under the others means he probably would be a bit smaller. Overall, the episode was good. I liked it. Now, while I think Weiss and Blake scenes were pointless, Yang Sin only had two things to note, the still images in Haven were bland, and, oh, just to bring it up, Haven itself feels... meh. And also, I agree with something Kitty said to me, that it looks too small. And also, the use of the end credit scene just felt like padding, but I enjoyed the entirety of the Lionheart scene and the postdoc footage scene. In fact, the episode almost made me like Oscar. How amazing! Unfortunately, he still hasn't done SHIT! And if we bring up the intro, well, so far the song is my least favourite. Although only the first two instantly stuck, so it'll probably get better over time. Although I did listen to it about 18 times in a row, and all I could remember were the first two verses and the guitar and drum work in the first 25 or so seconds. That guitar riff after the first few s lyrics was pretty freaking neat. But the animation... Yeah, that's without a doubt my favourite. While I really like some of the symbolism in Volume 3 and enjoy the beautiful animation of Volume 4, I think the Volume 5's animation is AMAZING and I love it so much. All I am concerned with seeing the foxes in the opening, given the lack of them in Volume 4, despite them having a pretty memorable instance of this stance in front of a burning and glowing Adam face that made a lot of people I know go crazy wondering what they do. To be fair, only the Ranger vs. Grim Packs and blah, 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 blah moments in the intro are absent in the volume. I'd like to think that Blake and Adam thing is symbolic of something to do with Blake's shitty character. I'm having faith that Oscar will get to do more training and, hopefully, be a gateway to us understanding Osborn's abilities. On a side note, Osborn has a Maya model. 
I hope Adam gets to do something and not sound as Montoya as little crew by Sasuke Uchiha and about as invested as a jock at an anime convention. I certainly hope Cinder and this chick do something of importance. Also that Raven and Yang get to do stuff. I wouldn't mind seeing the Ilya and Super Miles Tail Prowler brothers do something. And I very, very much do hope that Hazel V, Nora and Ren and Yang vs Mercury gets to happen. I kind of want to note that Emerald didn't get to show up, which kind of makes me a tad concerned. But hey, Sienna Khan didn't show up and we can see in the trailer she's finally going to do something and show up. Also, Neo hasn't been in any intros, but she's rather prominent in Volume 3 and confirmed for this volume. So, with any luck, she'll actually show up again? I mean, she's confirmed, so yeah, there's no luck involved. She is going to show up, but ugh, with any luck, they won't ruin her fucking character. But I have at least a little more faith in the writing crew after this episode, because I at least managed to like this one without them needing to throw in a gratuitous and out-of-place fight scene. Oh yeah, and Salem, really trying to spark some deviant not giant woman fetishes, aren't you? You know, it's, it, it's during this recording that I realize Neo and Winter have more screen time in non-canon than actual canon.